So welcome to the afternoon stage of the FinFellows crypto event. I'm happy to share this stage uh, with another two experts. Um, so welcome uh, to the afternoon stage. Uh, we will talk about the uh, topic of DeFi and blockchain gaming, gaming converge. And uh, yeah, my name is Tobias. I'm a German blogger and I will moderate uh, this panel as well as uh, I did in the morning. Um, but it's more about the experts. Uh, so, uh, Jailish, maybe you can give a short introduction of uh, you as yourself as a person and the company you're working with. Okay. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm uh, Jailish and uh, from Mauritius, been in the media industry for uh, 12 years, you know, into content distribution, production, and so on. Uh, in the last three years, move into this crypto space, NFT, and we were lucky to be there early. And uh, yes, so our we are curator for an NFT platform, uh, a, a platform called Loot NFT. And uh, we are also real estate or virtual state uh, uh, developer. We, we help sell virtual spaces in, in the metaverse. And yeah, doing a lot with this industry. Okay, great. You also had the panel uh, discussion yesterday. With your company, yes, uh, yes, with James uh, Jushen, the CEO of uh, Femolder, we talked about uh, you know stepping into the metaverse and how yeah. you know what to look for and how businesses can get involved and obviously they can reach out to us if anybody wants to to take their brand into the metaverse. Yes, that was yeah, it was uh, a great panel. So if uh, yes, if you missed it out, it will be on on YouTube after the event. Uh, as, as soon as we get there. So, uh, a second expert on this stage. Welcome, uh, Davis. Please uh, give uh, us a short introduction of yourself. Hey, everyone. Pleasure to be here. So, uh, yeah, my name is Davis. Uh, I'm a co-founder of Coliseum. So, uh, in a nutshell, um, uh, we are game developers of more than eight years experience developing mobile games. And uh, currently, we're building Coliseum, uh, which is uh, it's a bridge for, uh, for Web2 games to Web3. So, basically, our goal is to help Web2 games to uh, implement implement tokenized game modes, implement different kind of uh, uh, tokenized game modes, tokenized uh, monetization methods, unlock new markets without uh, without having any prior knowledge uh, prior knowledge in blockchain development. So basically, our mission is to uh, leave the game developers to do what they do the best to build great games, and uh, we'll take uh, we'll take care of all the rest. So yeah, this is a nutshell. Great, thank you very much. So, um, dear audience, um, we, we will talk about the, the talk I just mentioned, DeFi and blockchain gaming converge. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, you will find on the right side uh, of your uh, screen uh, a little box where you can put in your questions or comments, and uh, we will come back to them uh, probably after the uh, after after we dis discovered the topic ourselves and uh, try to give you the best answer we are we are able to to present so uh, feel free to uh, make make any questions same uh, offer to you guys uh, if you have any question to the, each uh, other one participant on the channel uh, just feel free of, to ask and uh, let's have a wonderful discussion um cool. so Yes, yesterday we were talking about a little bit uh, about scam, and today's morning we discovered uh, the topic of blockchain and the influence of blockchain in industries. Um, so maybe whoever wants to start, uh, can you maybe give a short introduction of what is DeFi, what it stands for, what it is, and what blockchain is in the in the universe you are working in. I don't know who wants to start in yeah, feeling comfortable. So uh, having the question, what is DeFi? So I'm, uh, I'm, I'm getting this question pretty often and uh, usually from people who have no connection about it. And uh, I love the, I know where I heard it for the first time, but like the best explanation of DeFi in my opinion is that like, imagine, imagine bank, banking as you see it with all the services and all the, all the products which bank has like uh, invest, investing, borrowing, uh, lending, earning interest, trading assets, etc. So basically, that's more or less the same, but uh, it doesn't require any any paperwork, any third party involved. So basically, everything is happening uh, on the blink of the eye speed, and uh, yeah, and you know, what's the most important? You are you're you're not paying almost any interest in the middle. So well, everything is happening in a smart contract, and uh, yeah, basically everything is written in the system. There's no way how to how to cheat it or how to uh, interfere with the system. Yeah, okay. and it's it's something yeah, that uh, uh, you know. I've, while I've been traveling, I've been experiencing. So, for example, um, I'm from Mauritius. My bank, my currency is in rupees. I'm currently in Croatia. 
Um, and there's a limit of how much money I can withdraw every day. So I'm paying on the exchange rate every day. I'm paying the fees every day. Then luckily here we have some crypto exchanges. So it's much easier. I get the money right away, the amount I want. And the fees are much less compared to the, to the real world transactions. So it's quicker, faster, cheaper. And, uh, you know, the amount is much more than you have restriction on your card. So, yeah, simpler. And you don't, you, yeah, and you don't have to explain to a clerks in the bank, like, what exactly yeah. was this transaction? <laughs> yeah, and basically explain every, uh, every credit card transaction to them. Yeah, yeah we just we that? discovered in, in in the morning about blockchain exactly what you just mentioned. Um, blockchain is about um, the uh, the owning of, of, of an asset um, and exchanging it uh, with uh, someone else um, you you want to exchange it with without any third party taking notice of it, uh, taking mm. any kind of, of uh, restriction on it, or uh, having having to to do the it's okay pass uh, for it. Um, so uh, that's exactly uh, what what DeFi, uh, decentralized finance is about. Mm -hmm. um, so um, we, we are we are talking about the the converge of uh, of, of the gaming industry. Um, uh, usually, everyone um, or not everyone, but but people are tend uh, to, to to sit uh, at home and in front of their PC, uh, in front of their PS5, uh, whether they got one. And uh, g gaming uh, on on a big screen. Uh, on a big screen. Um, in today's first panel, uh, we learned that there are two worlds. Uh, Davis, you just mentioned also Web two companies. We had a big uh, not discussion but explanation about it. So Web one uh, is is more or less uh, complete in the uh, completely in the in the first world without any touch to the internet. Web two is in between two worlds, and Web three is more or less based in the digital world. Um, so. Let's let's say the the PS5 uh, is is something in between Web One and Web Two. Um, how can people like me who has no clue about it um, uh, imagine what 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 blockchain gaming is? Can you maybe explain it? I want to go one step back. You maybe uh, about a uh, comment about Web One, Web Two, and Web Three. So uh, as well, I, re I read the thing, the article it was written. So the super easy explanation was: in Web One, you just read stuff, you consume it. In Web 2, you can write as well. So you're writing stuff. In Web 3, you just own stuff. So whether uh, it's something what you uh, you made yourself or uh, what someone else is uh, someone else made and you just exchange with that. But like, I think that, sorry, if I may start. Yeah, so, uh, so uh, from the way how you play the games, like nothing changes. You are still playing the games on your mobile phone, on, uh, on your PC or in PC in browser or pretty soon on PlayStation as well. Uh, only difference between not only there are a couple of differences, but the difference is that uh, finally with a with a blockchain, so it's possible if you play the game, you can own some game assets. So basically, you play game, you have some kind of progress, and there's option to just save the progress for you and uh, transfer this progress to someone else. So basically, you just uh, imagine if you are playing I don't know FIFA or whatever game you are invest like I don't know sleepless nights like for for five years you are playing the same game and you are like basically collecting some kind of progress and getting some achievement, but there's no way how to monetize that. And then in this case, your progress is being saved in, uh, saved in, uh, in digital asset. You can trade it with someone, you can sell it off or whatever, you can, like print it and put it in your t-shirt because that's, that's something, uh, something just, which is unique and uh, you totally own it. And um, I think, yeah, that's, uh, that's the biggest differences. And uh, what else? Yeah, they're, they're, they're like different stuff. So that's one angle, just saving this progress and collecting the progress or whatever. And second thing is blockchain gaming allows people to earn money. And that's what we saw. Uh, that's what we saw with uprising of uh, Axie Infinity. People play games, but they play the games totally with different motivation. They play games only if they can uh, win money there. So basically, look at the Southeast Asia, like Vietnam, Thailand, Philippines. If people like if you have a if you have a chance to monetize your skills, how fast your times are moving, then like I, uh, I think the majority there would prefer just to play games a couple of hours uh, per day and earn some money or get the same or even less by driving to or doing whatever. So basically, this is one more option, which is not quite uh, possible with a fiat currency because like there are some companies who are offering those skill based cash games, but like it takes you a lot of time to cash it out. Imagine you're playing money, you're playing game earning some money and if it takes you to a couple of weeks to cash it out like you can start to death and uh in blockchain is super fast everything's happening with the one blink of the eye you can cash it out and do whatever pay your bills mm -hmm. so but um 
Yeah, please, Jader. Yeah, I mean, the, the gaming market is, the size of the gaming market is estimated to be $175 billion. And the game fi market cap is around 4% at the moment, which is $6.2 billion. And what is now many gaming companies are shifting to be able to serve this new demand. And uh, what uh, Davi said, it's, it's the sense of ownership which is really, really the key because before you play a game, you get an asset, a weapon, a card or a skin. Uh, so whatever you're playing, it's, it belongs to the game. Here, you, even the game is shut down, the asset is yours and you own it on the blockchain and it's in the form of an NFT. So it's a, it's a rare collectible. So that could be even the game, you know, is, you know, you shut down in a year's time, but 10 years from now, you can, you still have the asset and you can sell it and it could be a rare collectible like we've seen from many things. So I think that, that the sense of ownership and owning, uh, getting paid for your time and obviously having assets to show for it and being in uh, in the form of an NFT, really, really, that's where people are taking the gaming world seriously. And you're not playing just for fun. You're having fun and you're earning, you know, play to earn, as they say, the terminology it's, which is which is used. It's not the, the typical way uh, waste of time as uh, yes. parents usually tell their children. Uh, now they can say, but, uh, <laughs> but I'm earning something for the rent. Um, so... Um, basic question: who, Who's who's paying what they earn? So who's who's behind that, having an interest of of, of paying for those assets, um, or paying you to earn money in those games? That's uh, that's the market itself who is paying. So basically, uh, I love the quote, which is uh, from my business partner. He once said at one conference, "Pardon my French." And uh, if you are a traditional game developer, so uh, your task is to fuck player as bad as you can. So player comes in your game and you try to monetize him like any way possible, like sell him expensive stuff, uh, show him ads, and basically uh, get all the possible money out from him. And uh, in Web3 gaming, it's a bit different. So you are as a, you have to rewire your brain and you have to just, uh, you have to make a competitive environment where player can do this to, uh, to each other. And that's it, you are just sitting in the middle and uh, whether you're not earning anything or earning some small commission, basically, Players are bringing in their time, their money, and basically they're like earning from each other. And then and all like then and it's so and the, as well the revenue business is uh, totally different. So you as a gaming company, for example, you just need a steady uh, inflow of new players. So because like if it's token based economy, then you are usually not cashing out the money and not earning any revenue. So your only goal is to have a steady user flow in order your uh, your market cap is increasing, and that's how you uh, that's how you earn money by your uh, by the tokens which you are holding yourself. Yes, and I think it uh, it depends on on the the game itself. We have farming simulations, uh, simulators, games. So there's there, there's certain games. It's they, they play in the virtual world. I don't know if you know of Tamagoshi. You know how you used to feed. You know, yeah. So these are the similar gaming uh, games that's coming out. So it's like they they can grow the plant, but that uh, whatever they, they are playing uh, with in the uh, in the game is helping real farmers in their real life. So some of the money. <laughs> is actually being fed to the farmers and that is getting translated into vegetables if that makes sense so, <laughs> so the kids get to know about agriculture they don't know they know about how to to grow a plant and at the same time while playing the game they are supporting a real life uh, farming project and that's one thing uh, one of the projects we're working on and then we had we have loot nft which uh, has uh, the, the, a place which is uh, a, a section which is called the Loot Arena. So what they've done is an auction uh, platform where we we sell uh, NFTs. But the, when people are bidding, while they're bidding, they're actually exchanging their their currency into the, the native currency of the Lootverse, which is the Loot Ticket. So it depends that who's paying for it. It depends on the game. It depends on the idea and the aspect. So for us, it's like we are supporting the, the, the artist community. So that's some money is going to the artist. Some money is going to the platform. Some, so there is, it's, it's, it depends really. This is specific to the game and the project and what their aim is. So, yeah. Okay, so and for the for the gamer uh, or the player itself, he's he's able to build things in the game. Uh, I don't know whether you have a good example for for doing it. Just like 
uh, I think Davis mentioned it, like like uh, like pieces of gold or any any kind of weapons. And as uh, before, you were like uh, you received it and you had it on your your desktop or whatever. You had it in your um, person which you are playing. Uh, you, you can now monetize it and like uh, well, I got fifty two weapons and I'm now selling twenty of them. And uh, someone, uh, someone else on the game is offered them on a, however, uh, created market, and can uh, can 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 buy the stuff from you. Uh, so yeah, yeah, and the, you can, the, this and is crypto this, and real money as well. So it's it depends how the which platform and who's selling it. So you can actually convert these assets into real real cash. Yeah, okay. there are there are guys there are guys for example who uh, there are guys who love. Just play games, actual gameplay. And there are guys who love to build. And look, for example, at uh, at Sandbox, which is like a super huge project. And like, you buy some kind of place of land with uh, many uh, many tiles. And you can build something here. Like, for example, me, I'm not a designer, and I'm not how to say the most creative guy in the world. But like, there are some guys who are just saying, "Hey, I see there's a spot for you. I can build build something. You just buy it from me, and that's it." And uh, the same uh, the same goes for uh, same goes for like for example. Let's forget about uh Let's forget about uh, blockchain gaming. Let's let's get back, for example, to Clash of Clans. There are like people have decent different reasons why they play the game. Like one guy just want to get in a battle and that's it and smash up an opponent. And one guy loves to make his uh, his village like with the symmetrical uh, symmetrical lines. Everything looks like beautiful and he likes just to build stuff. And so it uh, so it looks good. So everyone has its own motivation. And in this case, like if you are good at building stuff and uh, can just build build uh, something for other and then sell it and there are always be guys who are ready to uh, ready to ready to pay a lot of money for uh, good looking assets and uh outwards use them so for myself okay. i have no design no designer talent at all so my only option is to buy something good from you guys if you if you are great designers and that's it and then i'll i don't want to go walk around the metaverse with my terribly looking weapon <laughs> which is most probably not going to look like a weapon so i just need someone who makes it and sells, sells it to me Okay, so it's it's yeah. uh, some, some some kind of developing the the online gaming. It's not just uh, uh, playing with each other or against each other. It's also trading uh, uh, trading any kind of uh, assets uh, which are necessary or uh, some some, some kind True. of uh, played play, played in the game. True, but not not only like not only like playable assets. There are a lot of assets like uh, just the collectibles. I mean, there are many uh, many case studies. I'm uh, I'm currently having a lot of calls with uh like with a billion uh, billion dollar valuation uh, companies, gaming companies from Web two, and they're saying like they want to go, they want to do this some kind of slow slow uh, integration in blockchain development, and they said like we don't want to touch our games, just like run perfectly in Web two, so we don't want to interfere with them in no way, but we want to test our users how well adapted they are to that, and then, like how fast they will be able to understand how like DeFi wallets work, etc. So what I do. You're just playing some game with, uh, I don't know, Panda game. You have to, I don't know, you're walking you're walking around with Panda and, I don't know, trying to put three balls in a row and that's it. And like, if this game is trending, they offer you, hey, here are like Panda NFT uh, NFTs. Like you can just collect them and that's it. But there's no actual utility for them. But uh, okay. your only goal is to, to buy it. So you buy it. And if the popularity of the game is increasing, so you can always sell in the secondary market. The more people play the game, the more people want to get this rare Panda and that's it. Yeah, so uh, there are there are two two types of assets. Yeah, this, uh, those ones with which you play and which give you some kind of benefit in the game, and the ones who are uh, just which you just have just for, as a collectible. And then you have the fashion industry also, who's coming in with some games, <laughs> like Crazy. where you can buy this unique uh, piece which the designers couldn't design in real life, but your virtual your virtual self can can wear really like rare and unique pieces. So. That's another aspect because when we're talking about weapons, it's more in the gaming world, but the fashion world is more into the what we are used to. You know, like uh, yeah. I think we are trying to to explain this to 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 the, to the people or the audience who's not in the web free space. So it's like just imagine having a a you know Nike pair of trainers which was designed by this guy and specific so that. So that that demand for that asset is very high, and then for the reselling the, of the same item also is much much high because it's a global brand that is known in the real world. But to be walking around in the you know 2050 uh, trainers that's getting launched now in the virtual world, so that's that's the 
the maybe another way of putting it. So <clears throat> yeah, so the gaming is just how you engage your client to access the the asset, and then the asset now is resellable in in on multiple uh, markets, and you can cash out the money at the end. So yeah. Instead of working in, in uh, Starbucks for six dollars or ten dollars an hour, you could be playing a game and earning thirty dollars an hour. So yeah, that's just to kind of put it in in perspective. Okay, thank you very much. Um, so when I got that right, uh, we are talking about a big transformation process where people who are now playing online or playing just at home, uh, playing playing blockchain uh, games. What are the main um, obstacles what are the problems you just uh, mentioned jailish that it's about four or six percent of the of the whole uh, um gaming gaming, uh, gaming turnover uh, per year um i mean they started with uh, zero now they are at at six percent what are the obstacles uh, to to increase it more what what do people have to do uh, to to increase it I think it's education, training, explaining that this is not a game. It is a game, but you get paid for it. So it's not like, you know, it's because what we know of gaming is, you know, we call it in the real real world, people to, to say, call it, you know, time wasting. But this is time investing <laughs> to, to earn. So that's the, the education part of it and how to get somebody who's, Who's, it is the same thing, like, you know, somebody who's never used internet before, who used the old traditional phone, you have to use them, how to download the app, how to, you know, save the contacts. So it's, it's that education and the transition of information, how to explain to them. But once they are in, they are in. I have people who's 60 year old playing, uh, you know, coming in our auctions every Sunday. And, but at the beginning, you had to explain to them everything about the back end it's a one hour explanation and then they say i didn't understand what you said so there's a <laughs> yeah it's a it's a lot of reading to do a lot of studying to do and once you get in there then you're good because there's other gamers and players who will share information or who will you know crack different ways of winning the game and stuff so yeah i think education training and uh, studying that's the the real yeah I, to, I totally right agree. Now. I totally agree with you. Is the the problem of scaling this uh, this industry is that the law for now there's uh, still uh, too low crypto penetration globally because like uh, people are lazy. You know, like everyone is lazy by, by its nature. But like for example, if you look at the Southeast Asia and and, and uh, you have to look about the motivation of people. So if I if I work for I don't know in a grocery store for two hundred bucks per month. And you show me that there's a game, actually a pretty complex game with pretty complex onboarding, but we're playing we're just playing this game six hours per day. I can earn, for example, one thousand bucks per month. It can be as complicated as you complicated as you want. You'll just find a way how to nail it, and you're just motivated enough. And like if you're looking at the tire one markets, you look at the, I don't know uh, people playing games sitting in sofa in the United States, like. They have plenty of money, and the money, uh, the money earning aspect is uh, not uh, not uh, not such a driver for them. So they are like, like you have to try really hard to onboard them. And and, and I think once uh, once game developers will understand how to onboard those things like super easily, step by step, and I think the penetration will happen faster. And there are several projects right now, which they are like they are blockchain games with uh, play to earn elements at some point. But what I do, they promote a game. They don't tell you anything about blockchain yet. They don't tell you that you'll be able to earn some money there. You just start playing the game. You play for first week. You get addicted to the game, to the systems in the game. And then just, whoosh, listen, do you want to own this thing? Find a MetaMask. Here's your, uh, here's your uh, here's tutorial how to get a MetaMask. You can own this asset free of charge. Just, click, just claim it. And basically... They teach you, they, they put you a carrot. You can get this carrot if you'll just do those things which are free of charge. Okay, you download the MetaMask, you understand how it works, you get this free asset, you play the game for the next couple of weeks, Ta -ding! you can gamble on your asset against another asset. So maybe you want that guy's carrot as well. Fuck it, let's do it. And that's it. And slowly, slowly, they are like, they're getting you in because like you start from the scratch, it's super, uh, super complex. Like imagine you have to get a DeFi wallet, uh, you have to open a wallet. You have to go to exchange. Yeah. I don't know. It depends. You have to go to exchange, buy some tokens. Like what? I, what mm -hmm. else? Exchange. Okay, I have those tokens. How do I get them to my DeFi wallet? I have to get them yeah. somehow. You get them there. Then I have to log in with the MetaMask in the game. 
fuck, this thing isn't working through Safari. I don't have a Chrome Chrome browser. Yeah. <laughs> so basically, there are, there are many things have to uh, which we have to deal with. And uh, but once you uh, once you do it like slowly, 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 I think the penetration will happen faster. And uh, they are they have workarounds, of course. Uh, for example, uh, fiat on ramps, like uh, so you could buy the tokens directly with credit card. But like we are struggling with that ourselves. And we say like technically it's working, but only I don't know twenty percent of the time. And they're if someone is uh, someone is listening to this uh, this panel, someone who can offer me on ramp, which works one hundred percent or ninety five percent of the time, so I'm happy to I'm happy to have a chat. But uh, yeah, so basically you need to you need to somehow on on board those people more uh, more easy. So uh, that will help the the growth of the industry. Yeah, it's I've I've done a lot of that. You know, opening wallets and this password is going there, and now they are trying to transfer the coins, and yeah. the gas fees are high. Now they're like, oh, you know, huh? so there's it's like you know you're giving somebody a job who's not got a bank account, so you have to take them to the bank to open a bank account. You have to explain to them what the job is, and then you have to train them for the job. Then they start getting paid. So that's the same thing that you do in the real world. You'll have to do in the gaming world before you start earning. So if somebody doesn't have a bank account, so now which bank, you know, and what's the best in their country and so on and so on. So, yeah, that's the, the, the hard part. Once you've crossed that, you're already in the ecosystem then you can you can start having some fun but yeah most of the time people don't want to to open wallets and then it's like you have to handhold them and then they keep phoning you you know my coin has not arrived it's been 20 minutes i'm like if the platform takes 30 minutes i don't work for the bank <laughs> you know yeah. but yeah so that's that's the the hard part of it i think Okay, so uh, j j just take me as an example of of, of the audience. Um, I now listen to this uh, interesting stuff you're uh, you're talking about. How can I get started? So uh, where where can I go to? You just mentioned there is onboarding, there is training. What do I have to do? Do I don't know? Uh, earn my first dollar in any kind of game? Where where is my my point to go to? This is a brilliant question. Uh, too bad that our product is not live yet. I could get you as my client, but uh, <laughs> basically, you just have to you just have to pick one of uh, one of many games and uh, have to pick one of many games. I don't know. Try you try googling play to earn games, blockchain games, or whatever. And uh, each game requires different kind of assets to uh, to start playing the game. So, for example, some games require to get a NFT to start playing the games. So you need the NFT. So. Uh, it depends on the stage of the game, whether they are still se selling some NFTs, so you can uh, mint the NFT yourself. So uh, if you get some money on your wallet, it's, uh, basically you buy the NFT, you get it on your wallet, that's like your battle pass. You have this entrance card to the game, and that's it. Or uh, other cases, you just have to go to OpenSea or whatever, some marketplace to to bid and to get the, to get a pass from someone else. Or there are some... Uh, if there, are, there are sometimes when uh, the popularity of the game is growing fast and uh, it means the price of those assets increasing and uh, for example you cannot afford uh, you cannot afford uh, like to pay the entry cost for the game let's take an example to Axie Infinity so at some point the entry cost of the game to start playing it the entry cost is something close to 200 bucks like mm -hmm. imagine like person at uh, Southeast Asia usually they cannot afford to do it so uh, there are uh, so called gaming guilds who have those or gaming guilds or uh, uh, gaming guilds or uh, like uh, we've got academies where there's some someone who bought many of those assets and they are ready to rent it for you. You can just uh, rent it for one day. You go with the card, you play money, you get some earnings, you split it with the owner, and that's it. So yeah, but usually it depends on the game and on which on which stage the game is. So you can go to the game, and uh, I'm I'm sure that the decent projects they explain they have like a decent manuals how to how to get on board, and they have support on the opposite side helping you do that. But uh, Definitely, in a, in any of those cases, you're gonna need a DeFi wallet, most probably MetaMask or, uh, or 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 alternative. And yeah, you just have to trust them. That's the only important thing. Yeah. Keep your password. Uh, keep, keep keep your password safe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, in, in in the loot verse, I'm, I mean, uh, the gamified auction platform that we have. So first of all, you need to get a a, a wallet. That's that's one. Secondly, uh, you 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 should have USD coins in your wallet which is uh, and then you buy a bid unit which is 20 cents so you go uh, in the auction you bid and if you want to bid for you know 10,000 uh, bid units so you have a bid bot you put your bid bot your bid bot plays for you 
and then you have the chance to while you're bidding you are also exchanging the money into so if you're coming in euros you are changing to kunas for example your your money is not getting lost so it's getting converted to the native currency and you have the opportunity of winning an nft in the in the process if you win the the auction the bid so yeah it, it it's very specific that question you said is very specific because it depends on on a farming game a farm simulation game you will have to buy carrots and plant seeds and and do the other things but yeah like there's similarly there's a lot of uh, things happening in the football world and uh, so that again will be uh, maybe you come in you have to play and buy the the jerseys and stuff like that so yeah I hope that. I mean, in in the in the end, to to maybe transfer it to Web One, um, it's it's the same. Like you you decide to to play tennis, uh, you, you go there. Uh, you, you need to be uh, on uh, somewhere on the court. Uh, you have to uh, either rent it or you have to build it. Uh, you need a racket. You need your jersey. You need your trousers. You need your shoes, and mm. uh, then you take uh, the. Uh, yeah, the, the first balls, and afterwards you get better balls and uh, to, to to play with, and uh, so it's it's probably the same as you just mentioned. Uh, it's just in a in a in a more or less virtual world uh, where you have to connect your um, wallet, uh, which is which is your cash, to this world um, and to get somehow um, paid therefore. And if you're really good at tennis, you might earn your first dollars uh, with it. So it's it's um, it's. Probably the same. One pretty famous uh, example of, of, of what you just told is Steppen. Um, this went uh, through the media, I think, three, four months ago. It's it's uh, one of these um, uh, play play to earn games, uh, which you mentioned. Uh, you buy your shoe, um, you go outside, uh, walk around, and and receive some. I think it was uh, GST um, uh, to 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 be paid uh, for your um, for your time uh, you walked. Um, but if you look at the game, or uh, if you look at the the, the price of, of GST, it was uh, something around uh, five to to eight dollars. Now it's only a little bit of cents. Um, if you if you ask Google for it, uh, there is often some some kind of it's a scam, it's a Ponzi scheme. Uh, whatever. So, how how does this world of of blockchain gaming um, is is or has problems with uh, with punchy themes and and games? How uh, when I invest my money into a game to to earn money from it, um, how does this world uh, secures my money from from someone who runs away with my money? This is a brilliant question. Uh, the thing is that uh, I wouldn't say that someone is running away from your money. You just uh, poor economy and and, and uh, some 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 miss. Uh, I would say not a, like it's it's a matter of economy how it's built and uh, but calling it Ponzi, but like crypto, every currency, every cryptocurrency, even the U.S. dollar, like it's a pyramid, like it's tied to something. And then uh, in gaming. Uh, in gaming, the value of the of the token of every asset is uh, is growing. Uh, if the demand is growing, that's it. And at some point, what happened with Steppen? At some point, uh, uh, at some point, the demand for the Steppen, the hype is just falling down, and that's it. And those assets are just leaving. Uh, like uh, the value is decreasing, and people who have those assets, they are like selling them, and that's it. And if no one is buying them, then of course. So you can call it a pyramid because, like, of course, imagine like everyone is playing game, everyone's having the game tokens. And today it has some kind of price like like it doesn't work the way that everyone can now today go to bank to the exchange and sell those tokens for the value because the product itself it's not having a, it's not having like a, it's not a stable coin you don't have a, uh, you don't have a US dollar against like every token of yours so basically it's just a, it's just the hype which is making this uh, this market cap and that's it and in this case yeah yeah like, like Steppen for example I'm not I'm not sure what the, was the case with the Steppen but uh for example, you usually uh, you have to check like what's happening with the investors of the project, like when do, when their tokens are unlocking, when they're selling, when uh, when it's going to be the situation where uh, situation where uh, the sales pressure on the tokens is higher than the buying demand, and that's it. And, uh, you have to like pay close attention, uh, place uh, pay close attention to the tokenomics, like who owns the tokens, because the more tokens, the more tokens, uh, the biggest problem in the crypto is the more tokens are in hand of one player or player group or whatever it's investor or owner of the company. They can manipulate the market, and that's it. And if they, if they figure you out to sell the to sell the tokens, then that's it. You, your assets are just uh, 
basically uh, worth, uh, worth nothing. And they, imagine, imagine Bitcoin. Like if uh, there would be a guy who would own half of all the Bitcoins or all the Bitcoins and that's it. He, he would just have no money. He sells everything on the first day and that's it. He just starts selling them and that's it. And that, like, loses all the value of it. But Stepan, like I love the Stepan because of uh, idea of it. And uh, myself, I saw a lot of people who I think they never run in their life. <laughs> they just got us, got those sneakers and went outside to run. And uh, yeah, that was fun. Mm-hmm. So yeah, every, so think... every, every currency, every currency and uh, every currency and cryptocurrency is a pyramid at some point. And then and the value is value is going up all the time uh, as long as there's a, there's a new users coming in. And as soon as the user uh, user count is starting to decrease and the demand is decreasing, then, then everyone is uh, more or less in trouble. Yeah, and I think it's it's like investing in anything, right? It's like if you're investing in a business or anything, you need to do your research, find out if you know somebody who's playing the game already, if he's earning. That's a that's a a, a point which is which gives you comfort, and then and then you go ahead. So you need to do that little bit of background, and if you if you can check online if these people are real, they have you know the the full details, the founders of the project. So, yeah. That's the the KYC who you know to do before you you kind of uh, get involved and then not to be in that situation, right? Yeah. KYG, know your game. Yeah, <laughs> just made, just made up a new term. Yeah, KYG, <laughs> yeah, know your game. Yeah, that's the new one. Yeah, yeah great. I mean, um, if you if you compare it to to um, uh, let, uh, let's name it usual world stuff like uh, it's it's an Apple iPhone or uh, the the latest Nike sneakers or whatever. You always have uh, some 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 kind of of price jump in the beginning, especially mm-hmm. the uh, the the more rare they are uh, they are uh, the higher the price, and there will be a, a, usually a big price drop. Uh, after some time, I mean, uh, nobody uh, will today now pay. I don't know, one thousand dollar for uh, for iPhone three, um, but they pay uh, one and a half thousand dollars for for the next new iPhone, whichever it is. I don't know, um, but um, this this is some kind of normal. Um, uh, meanwhile, but uh, when looking into the in the the crypto world, looking into the block uh, chain gaming world, it's. It's uh, yeah. Let's say, especially in the in the example of Stefan, it's like it has always a, a very illegal touch. Also, it isn't illegal. It's just a normal way. Uh, it's it's more more bump and dump. So it's more uh, volatile, um, more more upwards, more uh, downward. But in the end, it's it's absolutely the the same as as we have it with with other goods, with other assets, and uh, it's it's just yeah. We are we are only in the in the stage uh, in, the, in the pretty early stage of, of uh, uh, crypto gaming. That's true. I totally agree with you. I I'll, I'll, I've been meeting a lot of real businesses, you know, people who are in the Web one mind frame, and uh, we've been trying to explain to them when they hear that the the word virtual, it's like they completely switch off. Oh, it doesn't exist. But it's it's like one thing I always tell them everybody is already in the metaverse one way or the other because you have a email address you don't give you you don't give you a real address you give your email address and you mm. have an identity which is tied up to it your identity is tied up with your bank and the bank so it's already happening but now is the different layer of it because you can see it more because uh, if if you, you somebody asks you for your email address that's where they can reach out to you but it's not your real address it's not your home address no Right? Yeah, right. So, but you already have a virtual, the address you gave could be, you know, like I have a friend whose name, uh, his address is abracadabra uh, the, at gmail.com. I was like, man, how can you take your, <laughs> your email address like that? So, so there is some sort of, you know, that's already there in the, in the back end. You know, your email address could be, with, could be not related to you. In a, in a way, it's not related to your physical address, but it is something, an address where we can reach you on, we write to you, we don't send you letters. And your bank works with it and everything you do, your apps are tied up to your email address. So that's already put you in a in a virtual space, if that makes sense. You know, so it's the same. It's the same for 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 people who want to get into this space. They are there, but 
yeah, they are just the word virtual and, you know, those big buzzwords, crypto and all that, they, they get, you know, um, they, 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 that gives a, a, it puts doubt in their, in their head, but you are already in the system. That your Facebook account is tied up to your email address, and hence many other things are already tied up to your, not to your real address. People don't even know where the people stays, right? So yeah, that's just to if that gives you. And I mean, little... uh, your 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 email address is something people reach out for, and your your DeFi wallet or your wallet overall is another address. It's like your like your banking account. Um, mm -hmm. You just you're just missing out the third party. Who's, who's who's taking care of it so um it's like yeah it's it's the converge so it's <laughs> exactly the the uh, transformation uh, process we are talking about um uh, from from uh, from the usual gaming into into the blockchain gaming um so what do you think um will we online game or blockchain gaming be in in 10 years you just mentioned it. it's in a, in a very early stage um, I, I couldn't rate. This is why you're the expert. I couldn't rate where we are on a on a, on a scale from I don't know one to ten, one to a hundred. Uh, what do you think? How how will this develop? Um, and which are the the things multiplicating um, the growth? Davis, maybe you can start. Uh, yeah, this is a brilliant question. I've been uh, I've been getting I think every second day and uh, i would say that the whole industry is still in diapers and, and that we are just starting and then and, and starting just like unlocking currently one market and this is as i said like from they are like in traditional gaming they are uh, all the gaming markets divided in three tires tire one tire two and tire three and we're tire one being the holy grail united states where people love just spending money for having a good time and not asking anything in return and opposite to tire three where people they just don't play regular games. Uh, they don't play regular games because they don't love to spend money for buying some flowers or fences or whatever. So they play a game only if there are two options. First, like if there's an option to earn money and that leaves two options, whether it's gambling for which you need license or it's a uh, skill-based game, basically play to earn games or skill-based cash games. So and that's why only this market for now is, uh, is like how to say developed in the blockchain gaming. But um I would say, like, I don't know how many years, like, let's say, I don't know, three, four, three or four more years of education of uh, of big players from the gaming industry going in and starting to uh, to develop something and, uh, and, and offer super simple onboarding for that. And I think that would then it will happen much more faster. Like, if you if you go to LinkedIn right now and you check the open positions on EI Games, Activision Blizzard, or whatever those gaming companies who are like i remember those companies since i was a kid and you they don't have any blockchain game yet but you see they are hiring people they're building something and then and if, if like i for example i'm not a huge fifa fan but like i think all my friends are and uh they are playing the same game over and over every year they just get new logo the same the same design same mechanics they play play again like 100 bucks and get the new game and I think at some point also those games, they will start to implement something and slowly, slowly they'll move the audience. So yeah, let's say four years, three, four years, but uh, I'm not going to try to guess any, uh, any, any size of the market. I think many things in the education industry, in, this, in the educational world will be through gaming, like learning the periodic table. You know, there's, uh, there's uh, a professor we are working with who's uh, inventing a game like the Hadron Collider. You mix the different, uh, you know, um, things of the periodic table and what comes out of it. So that's going to be education through gaming. That could be one. <clears throat> and I think um, helping people to keep the planet clean, maybe in the game, you're not allowed to use plastic. That translates in not using plastic in the real world. You get points. And if you get fined out, you get fines. So there's, there's a lot of positive things also, like you said, uh, you know, doing sports to keep your, you know, to, to, to go in for a run and get points and that keeps you. So that's, that's going to be more integrating gaming in things that make sense to us and uh, maybe election campaigns in the next 15 years no. will be through a game where everybody can, can select the, this is the guy they want. So instead of the government telling us their program, the people is going to tell them, you know, what they, they wish to have. So, 
yeah, I think the future is, is kind of, uh, you know, exciting and it would be, there's going to be a lot of good things that's going to happen through gaming and a lot of positive things, but obviously every coin has a head and a tail, right? So, yeah. True. Sure. Okay. Um, when you're talking about education, um, for a funny reason, all the other panels uh, had, had the education topic as well. Um, maybe like uh, we, we need to uh, to explain a crypto and blockchain uh, to to the people outside the crypto world. Um, how do you think this this education process um, is is able to to grow and to speed up over over the next month and years? Do you need some uh, some uh, some kind of uh, I don't know affiliates or uh, do you need some uh, some kind of uh, regulation um, uh, through that? What's your what's your idea on that? You just, someone just needs to make a learn to earn concept, and that's it. Where people get money for learning, and everything will be yeah. fixed. But uh, I think that uh, I think the projects will do it. And then uh, I don't know it's it's pretty pretty tricky question. And, and, and I think the better is the project, and the more the more they uh, respect their players, and uh, they'll do it. They'll slowly slowly help them migrate and learn it. As I said before, like they're. Two types of projects, two types of uh, games. Ones who just want to have like pure play to earn, come inside, spend money against each player, and we just want our market cap to raise. And at the same time, there are like huge gaming companies, as I said, like who want to educate. Like I, uh, I also am speaking now with one gaming company who have like uh, gathered uh, professionals with 20 plus year experience in gaming. They're just making a good looking game, like which you can play for months. And slowly, slowly, they're just putting in putting in some elements of blockchain and, and like this way slowly onboarding them to the to the blockchain gaming so i think this is the right way how to do it and, and, and without like without pushing it and making the first step too complicated it's uh you're just scaring people off but if you can find a way how to do it organically uh, how you can do it orga organically then um, then you can do it and that's uh, one more thing what we are doing uh doing ourselves with Coliseum right now so uh we are taking games who are just being built yet in Web2 and then we are implementing our SDK so those games can now have a tokenized game modes. So they can start running play to earn, play to earn modes in entire tree markets. But at the same time, we are onboarding games with already existing communities. So imagine like, whatever, let's take example, Clash of Clans, everyone knows the game. So you've been playing Clash of Clans for eight years. You have spent shitloads of money in the game and you have skills. Like you're definitely playing better than I am. And in the meantime, they are, for example, releasing one more version, the same Clash of Clans, but play to earn version. So you can finally monetize your skills. And then and, and that will be that will be strong motivation for the player to to learn those steps, how to get a wallet, how to connect it, how to get the first assets, how to transfer them to someone or how to sell them or buy them or whatever. So those communities and gamers who love the brands, who love those games, and then they'll just uh I think they organically they will migrate. Like if the guys who the guys who play FIFA, they don't play anything else in the world. Like what they do, they just sit and play <laughs> play the FIFA all the time. And like if uh, EA games will tell those guys, so guys, next mm -hmm. FIFA is rolling out, but there are going to be some there's going to be some new stuff inside, and we will slowly slowly doing the gameplay. We'll teach you it. I think like during next year they will all be blockchain gamers, and that's it. And I think most probably, uh, <clears throat> you know, being from the media industry, we've been selling a lot of kids content and it's a big, big struggle for, for big networks to look for content to engage kids. <clears throat> But most, most probably a child at this, uh, you know, in 2022, five, six years old, he's already got his game that he's playing and, you know, he's downloaded an app from somewhere that nobody knows, but he's playing. But the only difference is this, through this way, he is rewarded. For, for playing and he 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 brings uh, a contribution to the household it could be as small as ten dollars a week but that could be his little uh, you know uh, piggy bank for christmas to buy his parents a gift or something so so there's there's i think it's already happening but it's just that the education system we are using is I don't know when it was designed, how many years old, and that the evolution has happened very quick. And we saw during the pandemic how everybody now shifted every their kids to Zoom. And I was like, wow. So there is that that's that's happening, but it's just that the education uh, people in the education uh, sector should plug in more with 
with uh, you know different uh, gaming companies to create games that's going to generate more knowledge to the kids and generate value and reward them for their time rather than just watching I don't know uh, uh, different shows that doesn't really uh, bring them you know something for their time reward them for their time. I think that's um, that's a brilliant. Um, thing to 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 think about when you, when you were talking about the uh, education system, which is probably dates back to the seventies. And uh, I got I got two kids at school. Uh, we got the COVID pandemic, and uh, so everything was uh, switched now on online and and some kind of. And I think uh, the schools and the government is is really struggling with this. Um, maybe. Uh, or I don't know. Uh, just a question for you: Is there some 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 kind of trend to maybe not do it like a play to earn, but uh, l learn to earn or something like that? So just just an imagination out of out of the discussion you just mentioned. It's like uh, why not put um, a kids in, in in front of a, um, a digital world or a digital um, classroom um, to to give them the input. And they could maybe earn their rewards uh, through their homework and stuff like that. And depending on this one, uh, they, they can they can play afterwards. I mean, some dumb idea, but uh, is is there any trend? Have you ever heard of of some project um, uh, facing this one? I've uh, I've heard uh, I've heard uh, someone using this trend, and there was a guy who uh, I think he was director of some kind of school program, and uh, he was reaching us to, uh, reaching out to us, say, guys, you have a, like huge developer team, why don't you help me to uh, to make this stuff? And uh, I would say ninety percent something like that's already done. So basically, it's uh, it's it's like gamification. How to say? It's like gamification of learning. And yeah. That's it, and you you can tie token to it, and and, and that's it, and that's the same as you spoke with the guys, like uh, with you guys. And the more uh, learners, the more students come in, and they start to use it. The the more you uh, the, the 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 value of the token is rising, and that's it. Like look for example at uh, Duolingo, which is the language learning application, and uh, and why people learn the language. Okay, someone wants to learn it, but like when usually people start to learn it. And like I was learning Spanish for some time, and my only motivation to open the app in the evening or uh, I don't know whatever sitting on the sofa, my only motivation was to open it and complete the course only because there's a status bar and I saw that two of two friends of mine they are already they passed me and I have to catch them and that's it. And you can uh, I think you can tokenize that and uh, make it happen, but you have to figure out the economy grade because like imagine if your kids finish for example third grade, they learn everything, they get cash. They just they stay once again in third uh, third class. They want to finish it once more to get more money. But uh, but I don't know. But uh, I think it's possible. But uh, like you have to teach kids, but you have to teach parents. And I would say teaching parents this stuff would be the most difficult thing. But so motivation again, motivation. Why not? Yeah. yeah. So we're once yeah. again at the topic of education. Jailish, go for yeah. it. Yeah. And the brain absorbs more and more information when it's having fun. So yeah. if, if you're getting paid, if you're getting paid. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For them, let's say, okay, they're not, they're not like, you know, a child is not very interested in money, but if they're having fun and they think they've, they've won this stage, they finished this stage and just imagine having your education, your counting done, your periodic table done, knowing the plants, how they can discover about plants, about animals, about insects and, and all this could be much, much easier And than just being in a on a Zoom call where you know somebody is talking to to 30 students at the same time and you know uh, so yeah that's that that's just bringing the fun back into the the classroom but the classroom that the layout of the classroom is much different. True. Yeah. True. Mm. Great conversation so far. Um, so, dear audience, if you have any questions, uh, just keep them coming uh, in, the, in the box right now. I've seen there is uh, one question I would like to turn to. Um, Yusuf asks, uh, I see blockchain gaming more often, but when this trend will take over to this world, um, does one of you feel comfortable answering it? As we just, I think we already uh, touched this topic briefly, and uh, I would say still need three to four years for uh, just to get to the retail. Because like for now, it's only either people who want to earn money, they are motivated enough to play the games, uh, or I don't know, someone who is just into into crypto. But like the key is how to bring the blockchain gaming to uh, 
to retail. So every every household who is having owning a PlayStation or or buying uh, games on Steam or whatever, so they would uh, they would get to this. So I would say it's three or four years, and it's a matter of big game developers starting to finally slowly slowly implement this education and this this like super slow and steady like learning process. So not just to put in your uh, like put in your face that from 2023 FIFA will be blockchain only and that's it you need your MetaMask or there's no other way how you play it like it's not going to work that way so slowly slowly teach it show it give something free of charge and then after in some time again I offer those guys to to trade those assets so I think this is the best way how to do it or other ways it's it's not just going to scale I think the the best way I will answer that is it, you know, when YouTube came out, nobody knew you could earn a lot of money from YouTube before. So it took a certain number of years. So now people are earning thousands. So the same thing for Instagram, where the influencers are earning money. So that cycle will be on how people are adapting to the new system. And once they start earning, then the the gate will be flooded with, yeah. with a lot of people. So that that the time factor depends on how quickly people pick up on it and how quickly they earn. So then they, when people see others earning, that's when they come in. So I think the time is, it could be very fast, but I think to be uh, fair, what uh, what Davi said is, yeah, two to three years or even longer. Okay. But one thing right. is for sure, it's not going anywhere. And this is not just some kind of hype or whatever. I think this thing is here forever and it will stay. The question is how, uh, how quickly it's going to happen. The same with... Uh, there are some uh, some pictures of newspapers back in the days where uh, with articles, internet is not here forever. It will come and go and <laughs> it, it, it didn't go anywhere. So uh, the thing is with blockchain. So it's here I think it's yeah, the here. newspaper doesn't exist anymore. So, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so um, there is another question from Joao, um, uh, which we haven't discovered uh, in our panel. Uh, welcome back and very interesting panel. Uh, he doesn't want to sound boring, but maybe he can. Uh, you can answer. But uh, but how can blockchain implement a tax on what you earn? I think it's a very legit point. Uh, if you earn money and 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 any kind of uh, blockchain gaming, uh, the yeah, the, the the state, the government wants to have their share. Is there any idea of how to implement uh, taxes on that? Mm. This is a very good question. The problem is if I'm in Latvia, I have to pay taxes in Latvia. And Latvia will never integrate the, some huge uh, huge solution. No, the question is like, like now the reality is that you can play, you can trade, you can do whatever, but as soon as you want to cash those assets out, they are taxing you They are taxing you heavily. It's like uh, I can uh, I can trade stocks and, and, and then the same goes if I sell NFTs or sell my tokens like that. I don't know, sell Shiba, Dogecoin or whatever, and that's it. They are, they are treating you the same like you're selling actual uh, company stocks. But uh, I think there's a way how to... Uh, there's definitely a way how to do it, how to, uh, I don't know, to, this is not a question to me. I'm just like, uh, I'm just dreaming here. So, but like, uh, you can know, of course you can automate it from every transaction. There's some kind of fee, which is like, everyone is used to gas fees. So there could be a fee which goes for, uh, for taxes, but how can you, how can you be sure that uh, you're, you're paying the taxes at the, at your tax residency? And, and that's, that, that's the biggest question. How fast countries can adapt it? Because like in Europe, it's a huge problem with uh, taxes, with AMLs, with, uh, with banks and then that's it and like like I'm, I'm operating with uh investors money about which i have like full aml like uh i know who invested the money where did he get this money from i see that for example someone sent me his well, employment agreement that he is getting this and this uh big salary here's a statement from his bank and that's it and banks in europe they said no this came from crypto forget about it like, and then i think we have to solve those kind of problems first and then we can only uh think about some automated taxation so and, yeah, uh, the, the, the Web2 finance world has to adapt. And, and then once that's done, then we can think about it. Yeah, uh, we are, I mean, uh, I'm also a curator for, for Ludverse. So we are selling uh, art for NFTs for artists and we're having to pay artists for fiat because some of them, they don't know crypto and they wanted, they were more comfortable in getting paid in fiat. So yeah, we actually paid all our tax because once it comes out, uh, on uh, from the blockchain to into uh, through an exchange to our bank account, 
we had to actually sit with the accountants uh, to explain to them what this whole thing is and they are checking, they are monitoring. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, we are paying all the tax. So I, I guess once it comes out in the in the fiat, it gets converted into fiat, into the real uh, world currency, then you'll have to show where it comes from. And uh, blockchain gives you that full transparency, radical transparency, where you can see who, where it comes from and uh, who, who plays the bed, the bid and everything. So, yeah, uh, yeah, it's fully taxable from my point of view. And uh, yeah, if it, it's not, maybe if it's $50, they won't go. If it's a big amount, then obviously you'll have to show your, your, your uh, source of transaction, source of funds and everything else. But in the end, um, this this also comes down to uh, t comes down to the to the topic we had of education. I mean, uh, you, you you need to educate the tax system um, mm -hmm. and and transform the tax uh, system in some kind of of, of of new area where they are able to uh, to uh, to act um, in in this in this crypto world. I mean, uh, it's just uh, the same way as education; it has to transfer. Now transform um, and to yeah to get a little bit uh, an idea of, of of what this all is all about, but uh, because they they won't be able to stop it somehow. Yeah, you have to show them the full business plan and how you you become like an entrepreneur on your own, right? You're making money and, yeah. and digital assets, so you have to have your business plan and uh, why you join this platform and what you're doing and yeah, I think it's like any other business, but yeah. Uh, and they need to to start accepting it. Yeah, and they they need yeah. to understand first before we even, yeah. <laughs> which is hard because right. they've been used to the old system where everything is yeah. in an Excel and it's like this low, this low. But now it's kind of a bit uh, taking them uh, out of their 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 current situation, the the usual situation. So, yeah. Okay, great. So um, next question is from two initials. Um, it's CZ. Uh, hi, I'm a fan of gaming. I want to know when will blockchain be involved with every game? I think we more or less dis discovered it, but uh, Davis, maybe you can have a short answer on that one. While I'm owning some games, then I will say never because I'm leaving some games without blockchain forever. So uh, I think this is not, it's not going to become like a, no, it's going to become a mainstream, but every single game I think will not have implemented blockchain. We'll see. Okay. okay. Only, only because of the, this question, I'll leave some games of mine and just never convert them to blockchain. <laughs> so, so I, so I would be right in this question. So. Okay, great. Um, so another uh, interesting uh, question: um, If I'm an investor and uh, have a share of owning in some game projects, how liquid is the investment? Is it a secondary market for that? If I, example, want to sell it, how does the process works? So if you're an investor and uh, uh, you're owning tokens, that's our case right now. So basically, we run an investment. Uh, we were raising uh, USDC, so stable coins. Investors give us USDC. And based on investing schedule, we are giving the investors back tokens. And uh, we, there's a portion of initial unlock. So basically, some portion of tokens you should get in your hands right away. And then their tokens are vested through 18 months. So you want, every day, you get a small, small portion of your tokens back. And, uh, and that's it. Then it depends, like... Uh, well, the project is a project is growing and there's liquidity and there's uh, someone who wants to buy those tokens you just go wherever this particular project is uh is listed so whether it's uh centralized exchanges like gate or binance or kucoin or ftx or you go to decentralized exchanges to dexes how they uh, how they are called you just sell those tokens to someone else who wants to buy them so if the project is good then there there are no uh, no problem with uh, liquidating those tokens yeah, just the same as we we had it maybe with a web one uh, example of, of of the iPhone. Nobody wants an iPhone uh, three today, but uh, maybe the iPhone thirteen. So it's just a matter. Of, I think you you said it in between the panel. It's it's a matter of how many people are interested in this game. Um, this is also what liquidity is affected by. Mm -hmm. uh, the more exactly. people, yeah. Are if there, everyone, if, yeah. If everyone, everyone who is holding the project's token will want to sell them. It's not possible. It's not a stable yeah. coin. So there, in uh, there's not so much money for the liquidity inside. Never. And uh, 
So basically, as soon as there are some people who want to uh, who want to buy a token, that you can you can sell it. And then, of course, uh, what's the price you want to sell it for? You just place your order. You can sell it below the market price. It'll be easier to sell. You can, if you want to earn more, just set up a high price and just sit and wait there. Then, uh, yeah. But so yeah, while the project is still trending and people are talking about that, then uh, then there's no no problem with liquidity. Okay, great. We answered all the questions. I put all the question on the on the table I w- wanted to talk about. Uh, so we are at the end of the panel. Um, thank you very much, Davis. Uh, thank, you, uh, thank you very much, Jalish. It was uh, fun. I learned a bunch of things. Uh, also, I, I heard of Steppen before, but I think this is really, really big, what you guys are doing there. It's very, very interesting. And uh, I will follow you. Uh, look at, looking at what what the next month and years uh, will will go to, where the whole industry will develop to. Um, so thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much for all the insights you gave to us. It's a very interesting uh, topic, and I hope uh, our audience had the chance uh, to take as much value out of this discussion as possible. So once again, thank you very much. Yeah. Have a nice thank day. Thank you for having. Thank you for having us. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you for everybody for sharing their precious time with us. And if I said anything which is not correct, please forgive me. We are all learning in this. Everybody's <laughs> learning from different. We don't have a school that's teaching us. We are learning on the job. So yeah, just like Java you. said, we, we are in the diapers uh, of, yes. of, uh, of 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 the industry. In the so industry. that exactly. was that was uh, the Finfellas event uh, for today. We are done. Uh, we will see you again tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. Uh, talking about MFTs. Until then, uh, you're invited uh, to go to the booth and uh, uh, yeah, discover and experience all of our um, companies uh, who are here, but also uh, connect with the people uh, who are regis- re- registered for the event and maybe have a one-on-one call if you like to. So thank you very much. Thank you. And, uh, your game. See you tomorrow. That's what Carl is saying. Know your game. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank yeah, you very yeah, much, guys. Yeah. Cheers, thank you. Bye-bye.